As promised, we are joined right now by a cornerback for the Chicago Bears. Coming off a big year last year, he had 42 tackles. He had 15 passes broken up in 13 games. He was fourth in the NFC in passes broken up. First Bears rookie to start week one at corner since 1996. He was an All-American. He was a two-time All-Pac-12 player at Utah. He was the 50th pick overall in 2020. He is the pride of Fresno. They open up their season at the Rams. September 12th, I'm talking about Jalen Johnson. Jalen, good to have you back. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you doing? Good, good. So you and I spoke last year in the middle of that X1 rookie season. Now you're getting ready for your second year. How much different does it feel coming into this season with that year of NFL play under your belt? I mean, it feels really different. You know what to expect now. So, I mean, just having that year under your belt, you just have a better feel for the game mentally, physically, um, just what the process is going to be like going through season, what the game weeks look like, just how to prepare. So just your confidence and your mind is at an all-time ease versus last year going into it, trying to figure everything out. So, I mean, I'm feeling really good. Body's feeling good. Mind is um, prepared. So, I mean, just... A whole different feel, honestly. My man, this is exactly the way you sounded when you and I spoke last year, talking about mind and body. I respect that a lot. Jalen Johnson joining us. You know, to give you an idea or the listeners an idea of what kind of a year you had, in the offseason, the team released Kyle Fuller, which means that you're now the number one cornerback on that team. It says a lot about what you did as a rookie and how quickly you've established yourself. What does that honor mean to you? And then how did you go about approaching this season as a result of that and that increased responsibility? I mean, honestly, I don't know how I honestly felt about Kyle leaving. I feel like it was some things that went on. I don't think it was as clear-cut as, okay, we want Jalen to be number one. But, I mean, I feel like it just ended up being put on to me once some things couldn't happen a certain way, and, and they ended up making making that decision to let him go. So, I mean, it's just about stepping into that responsibility. Um, but, I mean, definitely he was a big-time player for the Bears for many years and somebody that I looked up to. Um, and somebody that I felt confident um, to be able to play alongside of. So, I mean, now it's time to just being able to take everything that he taught me just from professionalism, just from being able to prepare the right way, take care of your body. Just a lot of those things that he had taught me now is just going to be more enhanced and more important than ever being that I now have to be that number one guy as he was. So, I mean, for, I mean, for me, it's just about being able to go out there and play and be consistent as he was. Jalen Johnson, my guest, you know, you're saying the types of things that guys normally say, well, for instance, some guys never actually figure it out. You're saying, though, things that I hear from guys who have been in the league several years. You're now in your second year, as I mentioned. Like, when you look back on last season, what was the transition from college to the NFL like? For instance, it's supposed to be really tough. You made it look relatively easy. I know you're going to tell me, look, it was not easy. But what was that transition like? And was it easy on any level for you? I mean, for me, honestly, it was it was more mental and being able to really be locked in consistently. Because, I mean, from a physical standpoint, honestly, it didn't feel too big of a difference. And, I mean, honestly, the times where I feel like I did get beat, it was always my fault. I don't think it was really too many times where I got beat. And I was like, okay, that was just a great play. But I knew right when something happened, I was like, okay, I should have did this or I knew it was coming. I didn't trust it. So, I mean, honestly, for me, it's just about being consistent and trying to play at an A level um, all the time and not go from an A to a B to a C back to an A. It was just always about being consistently at a high level. So, I mean, for me, it's just being able to get to a mental point to where you're really consistent in your technique, really consistent in your reads, um, and being able to know what the offense is doing and things like that, just being more consistent and fine-tuned in everything that I'm doing. Jalen Johnson joining us. So, again, we're talking mindset. Like, one of the things you and I talked about when you came on last year was your mental approach and how you work at that. You were talking about how one of your favorite books was by Tim Grover. Grover's got a new book out, which is amazing. I like it even better than the book that you and I talked about, his new book. But what about mindset? Like, how would you describe your mindset when it comes to being great? What is the thing that drives you and motivates you? I mean, shit, I got a lot of factors. I mean, honestly, just I've just always wanted to be the best every time I played, every time I stepped on the field. That was just something that I wanted to do, just have my respect and just be able to win. Um, but, I mean, now I got a lot of different factors from my daughter and my family just being able to change the dynamics of 
the city of Fresno, like you were mentioning earlier in my introduction, just being able to change the culture of things, being able to change young kids' lives. So, I mean, I know that there's a lot of things that I could, um, that I can change with this game of football and hopefully get into the second contract. It'll be life-changing for not just me and my family, but other kids and other people um, that I can reach as well. So, I mean, it's just, just about being able to help out my loved ones and help out my city as best I can. I want to remind you all that Jalen Johnson is in his second year in the NFL. You know, this whole thing about I got to get to that second contract and I want to be able to change lives and I want to help out my family. You know, of course, your city as well. But this is interesting. You told the Bears official website last season, quote, all my checks have been going to a distant account. I haven't touched any of my NFL money. End of quote. I love that approach. So where did that philosophy come from? And have you allowed yourself to touch any of that NFL money now that you made it to the offseason? Um, that approach just came from the aspect of not being greedy. I mean, I didn't need too much. I mean, for me, I've never had the money to go out and just buy all the fancy clothes and things like that. So, I mean, when I got to the NFL, that just wasn't something I was focused on. I'd rather had prepared for the NFL, prepared instead of going out and spending money on clothes. I was just focused more on playing ball and let the pregame outfits come later on. So, I mean, I'd rather had looked good during the game than before the game. So, I mean, I didn't really care too much about spending too much money. So, I mean, I just kind of lived off as much marketing money as I was able to make during season. And then I actually did end up having to use um, just because my marketing mm, numbers weren't as what I thought they were going to be. So, I mean, I just, of course, had to make some decisions to keep being able to live. Um, but, I mean, some things have changed on that side. So, I mean, definitely having more opportunities and being able to stretch that back, stress the marketing money back out. So, I mean, um, it's just about what's best for the situation at that time. And during season, I didn't have to use that money. So, I mean, now I'm just getting back to hopefully not having to touch that money. Oh, man. Uh, I love that notion also that I'm trying to look good during the game and not before the game. And, of course, the rest will take care of itself. I did mention Fresno at the very top, and I love the fact that you rep Fresno. I love Central Cali, Fresno, Bakersfield, those parts of the state. What's it mean to you to be from Fresno? In fact, Jalen, for those who don't know, what was it like to grow up in Fresno? And then I'm really curious, what's it like now to live and work in Chicago? I mean, Fresno, it can be, depending on what side of the line you're on in Fresno, it can right. be uh, a good life or it can be a not-so-good life. So, I mean, honestly, it just depends on what you allow yourself to get caught up in because, I mean, it's definitely a fine line between being able to get out and being caught to society and what goes on from the gang banging and violence and things like that, the drugs that come um, through the city. So, I mean, honestly, it's just about who, if you can just make it out of there, if you can survive your childhood, being able to keep your mind on the right track, not being able to get caught up around the people, around the wrong people. And I mean, there was plenty of times where I was around the wrong people, but it was just about being disciplined and not falling into it. And everybody knew who I was, of course. So it was never like people didn't know what I was after. So, I mean, even then, like it was it was just about making the right decisions at the end of the day. And sometimes you have to step away from the party. Sometimes you didn't have to go to the party or things like that. So, I mean, it was just about really knowing what you wanted and just being disciplined in every aspect of it. Um, because if not, then there's plenty of talent that could play in the NBA, could play in the NFL that is now lost on the streets. So, I mean, I just didn't want to be that person. So, I mean, just being able to stay disciplined in on my route to success. And then the city of Chicago – is the whole different ball game. I mean, it's bright lights, downtown, city buildings. Like, it's a whole different, a whole different look, whole different atmosphere of people, um, and a lot, a lot of business um, ventures come out of Chicago. I mean, they say it's the greatest city in in the world. So, I mean, just this year, being forward to being able to open back up, I'm looking forward to being able to experience it um, and really just feel how great the city really is. I love that response. And it's long been said, Jalen, you know this already, that if you're a successful athlete in Chicago, that's about as good a town as there is to be a successful athlete. One last thought. I know you're focused on your job and the defense. How much have you seen of Justin Fields so far, and what do you make of what you've seen from him? I mean, honestly, I don't think too much that everybody else doesn't think. I mean, we all 
know what he can do physically. He can throw the ball. He can run the ball. He definitely has a great feel. Some of the throws, he was making them projects where it's like, okay, that kind of confirmed what we what we all heard and just different things like that. He definitely can play the game of football. I feel like it's just going to be like for any other rookie, the Herberts last year, the Joe Burrow, just being able to figure it out more on a mental level um, and learn how to attack, how to approach the game, how to prepare. Just those things going into that first year that just any rookie has to learn. So, I mean, he's definitely going to, when he gets his opportunity, he's definitely going to make plays. Um, but it's just about being able to fine-tune his mental attack and his mental approach to the game. Joe and Johnson, my guest, my man, I'll say it right to you. I've got great respect for you. I admire you. I appreciate we have a relationship. And I like having you on this show. I appreciate that very much, Jalen. Great to have yes, you. Yes, sir. Thank you. You have a great day, man. Thank you very much.